What's up, everybody? Joe Simpson. Wanted to go through a bag that I'm putting together for my daughters and my son for their cars. I think rather than referring to these as like bug out bags, they would just be like emergency kits. And I wanted to put them together in a budget fashion. I didn't want to spend a lot of money or buy pre-made kits that were three, four or $500 each. So I wanted to stay somewhere in that 70 to $100 range. It's really difficult to put together a very comprehensive bag with decent stuff inside of it without hitting that $7,500 mark. What I wanted to do is first of all, talk about what the bag is and the scenario in which they might need it. Um, I went with a cinch sack, a nylon cinch sack, because it's semi water repellent. Um, it's kind of easy to carry and it's easy to conform to the big bulky things that you might put in here. So I find it to be very useful and it's easy to get in and out of. Now it's not compartmentalized, so everything's just kind of thrown in there, but in a pinch, somebody has to go, they grab it, they pick it up out of the car, they can even wear it like a backpack. Um, and it's, uh, I got the, I think they're the 20 liter cinch sack off of Amazon and they're $9 for two. So it's $4.50 a piece. I saved money on the bag big time. It's pretty decent quality. Um, the nylon doesn't look like it'll tear. And I'm designing this bag for about a two to three day stint. So for example, if your car is stuck on a highway in an ice storm, or if a hurricane hits and you need to make it to high ground and get out of the water or you know, whatever the case may be, uh, two to three days, I think it's gonna be a transitional bag, meaning it's gonna help you get from here to there. And this could come in handy, not just for the person in the car that needs to go somewhere, be somewhere, or do something, um, imagine if you pull up on an accident, there's people sitting on the side of the road, they need some cuts washed out, they need a drink of water, they need maybe a little bit of food, um, you know, some first aid, whatever it might be, you could help people with this too. So it's not just a bag that I'm going to say, don't ever touch this unless the world comes to an end. It's going to be a bag to say, hey, just know you have a bunch of useful stuff in the back of your car. Don't forget that when trouble happens. So let's get into it. I'm not going to go in any particular order because I can't. Um, the first thing I'm pulling out, and I, some of these things I've put into uh, plastic bags and some of them I haven't. But the first thing I pull out, this is called, I call this the comfort bag, the poncho, the socks, the gloves, the sleeping bag, and a cloth. So inside this bag, um, well, I'll pull it out. I have one of those kitty uh, cloths that expand when it gets wet. I think you guys have seen those before. I've got a pair of socks. This is for my daughter, so I got little pink girly socks in there for her. Um, I have an emergency poncho, so this isn't going to be warmth, but it is going to be very portable. And it's a uh, poncho that has a foil faced interior, so it retains heat. I put in, and I think these are always good to have, um, two heavy duty construction trash bags. Um, those are going to come in handy. You could fill those with leaves and use them for a mattress. You could use them to put hazardous material in, you could use them for just about anything. So whatever your mind can come up with with these trash bags, you can do. I have two microfiber cloths because you never know if, you know, maybe you're in transit and you get a chance to go to somebody's house and they offer you a shower. You have a way to wash and dry yourself a little bit. Um, I have some gloves. These aren't the greatest. I'm probably going to upgrade these gloves, but when you're uh, out in the cold trekking, anything on your hand is going to help you stay warm. One thing that I know that I don't have in this pack that I'm going to add is a knit hat for head cover and head warmth, um, but I just haven't gotten them in from Amazon yet. I went ahead and threw a toothbrush and toothpaste in here. Um, there's a little bit of dental floss in there and some cordage, so that might come in handy. And then last but not least, I have a, it's, it's a Bivy, B-I-V-V-Y. It's outdoor survival gear, and this is a sleeping bag, believe it or not. And on that sleeping bag is a whistle and a compass, and I have no idea if that compass even works, but it doesn't look great. My kids aren't going to be the kind that are going to be navigating through the woods and finding their way to far off places hundreds of miles away. Um, they're going to just be trying to get home or get safe or get warm or whatever it is they're going to be trying to do. Or if they're stuck in their car, you know, they might just sit there and use some of this stuff to keep themselves occupied until safety comes. So um, that's what's in this bag. This is some jute cord or some rope. This is gonna be handy for stringing up a tent, tying up your clothes or anything like that. It's not strong and I do have some paracord coming. 
I'm just short on one package of that for the other bags. And this is a roll of, it looks like about 50 feet of duct tape, 10 yards, 30 feet. So duct tape can be really handy. It can uh, totally repair clothing. It can repair a tent. It can hold things. So duct tape is a really nice thing to have in a bag. And this is called the Life Tent. This is a compact tent and it comes from Amazon. You can get it for about $12 to $14. And it is a, what they call a tube tent. And you basically pull a string between two trees and this tent hangs off of that string and you climb into that tube. You can close off one end. You can heat yourself in there. Um, there's all different things you can do with it, but it's better than nothing. I'm probably gonna upgrade this bag and put some type of like puffer jacket in there and also put a hat. So you'll have basically socks, um, You'll have a hat, a poncho, a tent, a sleeping bag, uh, a jacket if I put it in there. And then also I was considering putting in a pair of tennis shoes, maybe grabbing my daughter's oldest tennis shoes and saying, you know, you never know if you're at work and you're wearing like kind of formal work shoes, you may not want to go walk in, in those. So I'll put tennis shoes, a puffer jacket that can be squeezed down tight, and then uh, a hat. And I think she'll be covered for at least you know, a several day walk. I have a roll of plastic drop cloth, which can be handy to cover your gear or to be another tent to help other people. Um, there's all kinds of uses for plastic, so you can never have too much. You can also use it to collect water, rainwater. Um, speaking of water, I have a large bottled water. This is like, what is it, 30? I can't see the label. Let's just call it like 30 ounces, 32 ounce, something like that. And then I have a life straw. And this straw can be used to drink water straight out of a dirty water source. Um, I do hear that these can get clogged. So I'm going to tell my kids, if you ever decide to use these, make sure you have to use these because this is a last resort. And stick to this if you can. And as far as other water, I have a metal container, which I'm going to upgrade to a camping cup. And this has water in it as well. So I have this water 32. This is like, I don't know, eight ounces. So I've got like 40 ounces of water. I've got a water straw. And I do have heating and fire capabilities in here. So I could put water in this container, which is a single wall stainless. And then you could heat this and get it boiling and purify water if you had to. And I have another plan for water purification as well. This bag is one that I'm calling fire and light. Let's move some of this out of the way. In my fire and light bag, I have these tea candles. You guys have seen these before. These are those candles that are small. They burn for about eight hours, um, but they can come in really handy for a little bit of heat. And they can also be used to warm things with, warm cooking or water, and they can be used just for general lighting. So you can never have too many. Plus it's a way to light a fire. Um, you know, if you want something to burn for a little while longer than just regular, you know, tinder, you could use a candle and start the fire with something that will give you a little bit longer lead time to put stuff on top. Now I have two boxes of matches. I should probably put those in plastic and I probably will. There's 32 matches in each box. Those are imperative. I have a lighter, standard big lighter. It's in there as well. And then I have a cotton ball just as a reminder for Tinder. I have other cotton balls in the medical bag, but I want them to realize that you can use this to start a fire. And here's a tip. Um, Vaseline, chapstick, any petroleum-based jellies, and I have this stuff. My wife is a lactation consultant, and she gets these uh, lanolin cream, and this is an animal oil, um, but this is actually very flammable. So you can actually take this lanolin cream, open it up, take a little piece of this cotton, and smear it all together and light it, and it burns like a candle for quite a long time, and it'll really be a good fire starter for you. Additional to that, I took a couple fire starter squares from my fireplace. I don't know if this stuff will hold up over time, if it'll dry out, but this is going to give you at least the opportunity to start a fire with one of those. So I have a couple of lanolin creams, some tinder, and then also, since this bag is called Fire and Light, I have a flashlight. You can see this is a small flashlight that I got off of Amazon. I wanted a single battery flashlight because the double battery flashlights especially when you use double A's, for some reason they get a little janky pretty quick. So I just want one battery in there. It can go bright, it can go dim, and it can go flasher. So I wanted a flashlight with one battery, put in three extra batteries so they could have something to fall back on if it was dead by the time they used it. 
left the batteries in plastic, so they're going to be good for a long time. And that is fire and light. Now, I know I could put a flint or something like that in there, but I'm working with people that don't camp a lot. I'm working with people that are going to probably be freaking out if something happens. So I want to make it easy for them to figure out how to make fire and how to make light. So this is what I would call tools and charger. Knowing my kids and how they're going to be, first thing they're going to do is use their phone and burn out the battery. So I found these little chargers on Amazon. If I can get it to turn on. Okay. You can see this little charger here. It's just a little tiny wedge and um, it has a little cap on top and it has the perfect lightning cable connector right there. So you just plug that into your phone and it just starts charging right away. So I have this fully charged in the bag. I don't know how long it's going to stay charged in an unused state, but probably about every two to three months, I'll bring it in and charge them up, put them back in the bag. Also in the tool bag, we have some zip ties. Love having some zip ties. I have a charger for the charger in case they can get to power. I have tin foil tape. This tin foil tape can be used for signaling, for flashing, or any type of mending. This is really good. And it's really easy to take and it's paper backed and it's super sticky. I love tin foil tape. And I have a notepad and pencil in case they need to log or keep track of any data or facts or anything. Um, and then last but not least in my tool bag, I have a knife, pretty decent knife. It's about a three and a half inch blade. Um, this came from Amazon. I think it was $7. It's fairly sharp. It's good enough for getting the job done for the night or two or three. And so I just threw that in there too. Okay, food. This one was easy. Let me just show you something real quick. When I first went to the store, I went to the dollar store and I bought up a bunch of food and I vacuum sealed the food in a package. And I thought, hey, this is really doing something. I'm really packaging up a bunch of food for my kids. So I threw in things like some uh, fruit sauce so you could just open the container and eat it. I have chicken salad with crackers. I have a whole packet of uh, rice. I have some water hydration packets, which I'm probably going to still add to this kit and uh, some M&Ms for some quick sugar. And then when I started really looking at and investigating this food kit, I started to do the math on the calories. And I think this is only like 900 calories to 1,000 calories. So I was like, you know, that's a lot of space for not a lot of calories. And if they're in an emergency situation, it's not really about fine dining, although this isn't even that good anyway. Um, I think it's more about getting the job done, getting enough energy to get where you're going or get out of the situation you're in. So that's when I came across these SOS emergency food rations. Now I haven't tried these personally. I hear that they're not too bad, but this thing compared to this thing, right? This is 3,600 calories. This is like a thousand. Okay. This is three times plus um, what that is. And what's in here is there's one, two, three bars times three days worth. So you eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner times three days, you've got 72 hours of food. Now this isn't gonna be broccoli and asparagus and vegetables and healthy stuff, but it's gonna be dense calories, 410 calories per bar. So each meal is gonna be 400 calories. This will get you done. This will take care of business. It's tightly packed. It sits for five years. This is definitely the way to go. One other thing I'm gonna add, which is gonna augment the medical bag here is gonna be a pair of scissors. I wanted smaller ones, but this is what I found at the dollar store for cheap. I'm going to put them in there in the package. And I have that dollar store multi-tool knife, Swiss Army looking knife, which is horrible. Most people hate it. I'm going to put it in there anyway because it has a few tools they could use. I wanted to take a look at this medical bag too. This is pretty good. I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. This is a hand sanitizer right here. Just about a half a bottle. It was just laying around in the house. I've got a couple of larger pieces of gauze. And I got a little pack of Band-Aids, which I know most people are like, hey, if you're in a bad situation and you need Band-Aids, then you're addressing the wrong issue. Some people are like, look, you need a tourniquet and some towels and bandages, and that's all you need, which I agree with. Um, but I'm looking at this as kind of a transition bag from getting from one place to another, not necessarily an emergency you know, medical equipment bag to help somebody who's wounded on the battlefield. Um, so we've got some duct tape in here to use for taping so we can tape the gauze and the different things with that. We've got band-aids for the smaller stuff. We've got Bactiv, which is disinfectant wipes, which is going to help clean cuts and areas and that type of thing. We've got some other gauze that can also be attached with the duct tape. And I'm going to get some of that uh, tape that is like the stretchy, holdy kind. 
I've got a triple antibiotic cream, which is going to be good for disinfecting. And I've got some lanolin, which isn't necessarily good for disinfecting, but it can help with uh, maybe some burns or some type of scrapes or cuts or something. So who knows? Maybe some medical guy out there will tell me don't do that, but we'll see. And I got a couple more square gauzes here. Um, I've got anti-diarrheal. Let's say you ate something that didn't sit well. You don't want to be losing your fluids and getting sick as you're trying to get somewhere. And then I have a little bit of pills. I have some medications. Uh, I have Benadryl. I have the dosages and the hours to administer the pills. So this is Benadryl for allergic reactions or allergies. Um, I have Tylenol, which is going to be for fever and pain. And I have Motrin also. And then I also wanted to add in here some aspirin for maybe a cardiac situation or somebody that might need something to help uh, that has, you know, some blood thinning needs. And really that's it. I mean, I think this is probably going to get them where they need to go in three days. They're going to have a jacket, a hat, gloves, socks, shoes to walk with, a tent, a poncho, a sleeping bag, plastic in bags, water sources, heat sources, fire sources, string, battery for their phone, a knife for protection and for tools, uh, and food. So I think this is pretty comprehensive as far as a trunk or a back hatch bag for a car. I think this is more than adequate. What do you guys think? And what are some of the things that you put in here that you think I'm missing? Um, I'd like to get your feedback. But anyway, I'm not psycho. I don't think the world's coming to an end, but I always thought like, what do you do in a really bad situation when you don't have anything? Um, it's really difficult. So I think it would be nice to have some of this stuff to just help people, take care of people. If you came up on an accident on the road, if there's a homeless person that needs some food, you can give them your brick. Um, somebody's hurt and needs water or some first aid, you got that. So, you know, there's options. So anyway, just wanted to share that with you guys. Thanks a lot for watching the video. And uh, again, yeah, feedback. I'd like to start a dialogue with uh, what you guys do for your kind of kits and bags and, and what kind of things you think about. Take care. Have a nice day. See you.